We love the recordings. So, hey, everybody. Um, this is Miss Erin coming back from the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art for another Doodle Bugs. Um, this month, we are celebrating a birthday of a very, very famous artist. Um, his birthday will be on Friday. So a couple days from now, we'll celebrate the birthday of Jackson Pollock. So I thought first I would read you guys a really cool book about Jackson, and then we could do a little art project that sort of reminds me of Jackson's process. You'll see in a little bit, I have um, pictures in the story, and I also brought some video clip of Jackson painting so you can see how exactly he did his thing. Um, he's very unique. He started kind of a whole new movement of art when he started doing his thing. So I hope you like it. But unfortunately, because his style was to do big art projects, um, that's going to be tough to do on Zoom. So we're going to do tiny versions of his art projects. And then if you want to, sometime when you have um, maybe nicer weather, so there's not snow on the ground, you can do a big version like Jackson would have. So any questions before we get started? I know some of you are gonna have to use the chat if you wanna ask questions and that's okay. Okay, so. This is our story for today. It's called Action Jackson by Jan Greenberg and Sandra Jordan. And this one is kind of fun because they used paintings. This is a watercolor painting to illustrate a book about a painter, which I thought was kind of cool. So Action Jackson. Now, at the beginning of this book, they kind of give us a um, disclaimer, I guess, a little explanation of how this is going to work. So it says some of this account is imagined. We don't know if the sequence of events during the months of May and June 1950, when Jackson Pollock painted Lavender Mist, was exactly as we have described it, but we do have many firsthand reports about the summer when he made so many of his great paintings. His life in springs, the way he dressed, the way he talked and walked, and most important, the way he painted. And on those, we have based our story. So, Action Jackson. In the afternoon, Jackson Pollock, puts on his paint splattered boots and walks across the yard. Messy painting boots. You'll see why. There's this puppy. The wind blows in from Gardener's Bay, bringing the scent of salt marshes and sea lavender. His eyes miss nothing. Sunlight on the tree branches, tangled stalks of blackberry bushes, Beetles crawling in the grass underfoot. Caw Caw, the crow he tamed, flies down and lands on his shoulder. His border collie, Jip, runs in circles demanding a walk across the fields and down a country road to the wide sandy beach. But Jackson turns and keeps going. So there's Jip and Caw Caw which it looks like he's feeding a piece of bread. Pages are sticking together. The gray weathered barn used to be filled with rusted machinery, old fishing gear and broken tools. Now it's his art studio, a place for painting. Some artists put a canvas on an easel or hang it on a wall, not Jackson. He spreads his out like a sheet, smoothing it flat with his large hands. He wants his painting to be big, big as the sky out west where he grew up, flat as the marshland behind the house. Sunlight pokes through the cracks in the boards and flies buzz in the dusty studio air. Sliding doors rattle on their frames. He sits silent on the floor, staring at the blank canvas. 
I think maybe he might be staring at it to think about what he's gonna paint. Maybe thinking about his ideas. Some artists cover the canvas with a base coat of white. Not Jackson. He wants the paint to soak into the surface, leaving bare patches peeking through the stains of color. Some painters use oil paint or watercolors. Not Jackson. He'll use ordinary house paint from the hardware store to make his painting. Some artists paint pictures of flowers or people or landscapes. Not Jackson. He expresses his thoughts and feelings directly on the canvas, calling it energy and motion made visible. And still he sits surrounded by the cans of enamel, brushes stiff with dried paint, knives, sticks, a spatula, and canvases waiting. That looks like a messy art studio. But if I'm really honest, most art studios are kind of messy. They get that way when you make messes. At last he stands, he chooses a stick and dips it into a can of syrupy paint. Slowly he circles the canvas, stepping around the edges, straddling the corners. Black lines form a tangled web. Now he chooses a brush working toward the middle. Sprays of color, tan, teal, yellow, and white. An athlete with a paintbrush. He uses his whole body to make the painting. Layers build with each gesture, new colors emerging, blending, and disappearing into the wet surface. He swoops and leaps like a dancer, paint trailing from a brush that doesn't touch the canvas. I want to make things make a longer and longer line. I want to keep it going. And this painting for our storybook, I think is inspired by some video footage that I'm gonna show you guys in a second. That's what it looked like when he was painting, splattering and dripping and dribbling paint all over the place. Hours go by like minutes. Suddenly he feels exhausted, used up, his inspiration, inspiration gone. Things get in the way of the flow, like roots blocking a soil line, he said. He puts down the brush and goes into the house to help make supper, his mind filled with thoughts about the wet painting back on the studio floor. Making dinner. I'm still thinking about the artwork. The next afternoon, Jackson prowls around the canvas studying his work, but he doesn't pick up a brush. Instead, he walks the beach past the sandy marshes and the tall Spartina grass that waves in the breeze. He spends hours sitting on a grassy dune watching the gulls. There's him and Jip and the seagulls. Do you think maybe he's sitting still and being quiet again, thinking more about what he wants to add to that painting he's working on? In the barn, the layers of paint dry. Almost a week passes before he dips a brush and begins his dance. What is he thinking? Does he see the sunlit beach, the pattern of waves, the interlacing branches of the trees, the lush summer grass outside his studio? He says, I don't know where my pictures come from. They just come. And the paint flows. Like the Native American sand painters he saw as a boy out west, he moves around the canvas, coaxing the paint into loops and curves. On the floor, I am much more at ease, he says. I can walk around it, work from the four sides, be in the painting. Fireworks splatter of rosy pink, twisting ropes of white, spangles of silver, a lavender glow where pink and blue black meet. So now we can see why his boots are so messy.
Oh, look at him now. Jackson listens to jazz recordings in the evenings. He likes musicians who improvise, inventing their own melodies as they play. While he paints, the notes spin over and over in his memory. Swish and swish again. The rhythm of the brush matches the rhythm of the music. If a penny fell out of his pocket, he'd leave it. An insect lands in the wet paint and there it stays. Nails and tacks become part of the texture. He caresses the surface with sticky paint stained hands. One, then two handprints across the canvas. It looks a little bit like he's finger painting, doesn't it? It does look like he crawled right into the painting. His eyes move up and down, back and forth. With light steps, he follows the sweep of his brush. He stops and a pool of paint pauses. Paint, paint, and more paint, dripping, pouring, flinging. The painting has a life of its own. I try to let it come through. Again, he stops. He climbs a ladder to look down at the whole canvas. Every muscle aches. But his eyes, his mind, and his heart know the painting is finished. There he's still painting and now looking down from the ladder. You know, if it's a big, big canvas like he's working on and it covers the whole floor, the best way to see the whole thing all at once is to go up. Oh. There's the final painting. Some people will be shocked when they see what he has created. Some angry, some confused, some excited, some filled with happiness they can hardly explain. But everyone will agree. Jackson Pollock is doing something original, painting in a way that no one has ever seen before. This painting that he's been working on in this story is called Number One, and it's also called Lavender Mist. Let's see if I can show you a closer shot. There's a lot going on in this painting. And in real life, it's very big. It's a very, very large painting. For the next few days, he and his wife, Lee, plant the vegetable garden. They drive into town in their Model A Ford. He digs for clams on the beach. On the weekend, friends drop by for a party. It will take another week for the thick paint to dry, a whole week for the paint to dry. Then Jackson and Lee will tack the canvas to the studio wall. So there's his friends having a party at the house. And then, tacking the canvas up to the wall in the studio. Jackson sits silent, staring at the blank canvas spread on the floor of the barn, waiting. Soon he will dip his brush in a can of paint, lifting it high in the air to begin again. I love how this book shows that he would sit and think about what he was gonna make for a while before he would get started. Sometimes we don't give ourselves enough time to think about what we wanna do before we start. It's a really important part of the process. So don't be afraid to take a minute before you do your art project today and think about what you wanna do. So, if you're doing the art project along with me, hopefully you're gonna need a piece of paper. I'm using really thick paper because there's gonna be a lot of paint on it. And sometimes if you use really thin paper, um, it soaks through if you have a lot of paint on it. And sometimes it could even tear the paper. So I recommend very thick stuff. This is actually watercolor paper, but if you have cardstock or even a piece of cardboard, something like that is perfectly fine. Um, and it doesn't have to be white. I also have 
a cardboard box that has um, sides on it. You can use the lid too if it has sides on it because what we're gonna do today is kind of messy and you wanna keep it sort of contained so it doesn't get everywhere. Um, again, later on when the weather is nicer outside and there's not snow everywhere, see if you can put out a great big piece of cardboard or fabric or something like that and do this project, but like really big. It's so fun. Um, I also have some paint. I put them in little cups today so that I could get better access to them. But if you have a paint palette or a plate or something like that, all of that works too. Whatever you have. Um, I'm using tempera paint because it's washable. Uh, but you know, if you have watercolors or something else, that's fine too. Um, so what I would suggest is put your paper in the box. Now, I have some marbles. If you have something else that's kind of the same size, something that's rolly, that'll work too. I have little ones. I also have some bigger ones like that. So use whatever you have. If you don't have any marbles, skip this part. Um, but I happen to have pre-mixed some paint colors that I thought Jackson might like. He used in, um, in, lavender mist there was gray there was pink there was black and white and i believe a light bluish color um, and you'll see after you start doing this some of your colors might mix together and that's perfect that's actually what we want now oh shoot i should i'm going to take a pause here for a second before i start the art project if you want to collect your art materials to do the project now's a good time but I'm going to share my screen so that I can show you um, some of his, some of uh, Jackson's process. So let me see if I can share my screen. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this. All right, this is Jackson in his studio. So this is one of the paintings that Jackson did. This one is one of the ones that lives at the University of Iowa. It's called Mural. And if you look at it, it's pretty colorful and has lots of swoopy lines in it, but it's hard to tell how big it is. So I thought I would show it to you with a person in front of it. So you can see how big it is. Really big. This is another one that's at the University of Iowa called Portrait of HM. We don't know who that is. And if you look at this, it's pretty hard to see that it's a portrait of anybody's face, but maybe it's a secret. This one is called Number 1A. This was done a, a couple of years before the ones that were in our book today. And I love this one because you can see he put his handprints in it. Can you see up here? We're going to get a close up. There's a couple of handprints. They're actually all over in this painting too. There's way more than just these two. This one is a little different than the other ones. Not as many colors, mostly just black paint. But what I really like about this one is instead of a handprint, we have an upside down footprint. Oops, look at that. You can see, let's see, down here, there's some toes. This is the one in our story. It's called number one, also called Lavender Mist. 
And this one kind of has a cool hidden thing in it too. If you look really closely up in one corner of this picture's close up, right up here, it's a bug. Just like the story said, if there were bugs that got caught in the paint, he just left them there, which I think is super cool, a little bit gross, but super cool. And you can tell from this sort of slime trail <laughs> behind the bug that he caught it with his paintbrush and sort of dragged it through with the paint. So here's some video I'm gonna show you of Jackson painting. Okay, we'll come back. So I don't know if you noticed how messy his boots were in those video clips, but you can see why now, right? Because he is splattering and throwing paint all over the place. And some of it, he's moving really, really, really fast. Some of it, he's slower. So I think you can see he's doing lots of different things. There's definitely something going on in his mind while he's painting. He's thinking about it. So today we're going to do something very similar. So I'm coming back to my paper that's in my box and I mixed up a gray color of paint and I'm going to use a spoon because I put my marble in there and then I lost it. It's down in the paint someplace. So I'm going to scoop it out with my spoon. Mm. And try not to get paint everywhere when I do this. And I'm just gonna plop that right in my box here. Now, I'm gonna let it roll around and see what happens. If you're doing this along with me, you can shake the box really, really fast or a little bit more slowly. See what happens. If you shake it really, really fast, it's going to give you different marks on your paper than if you do it very slowly. So this is what I have so far. Now, I'm going to use my fingers because it's washable paint and I'm just going to pull my marble out of the box there. I'm going to plop it in the gray paint again. I'm going to do it one more time because I would like more gray on my painting. You can do this as many times as you want with as many different colors as you want and make it as colorful as you would like. Do some shake, shake, shakes. Let's see if I can try some zigzags. So back and forth. And then I'm gonna see if I can, really slowly, <laughs> see if I can do some swirls, some round in circles. 
that's much harder to do because my marble wants to go in straight lines in my box here and those are hard. All right, so I'm gonna take that out for now and I'm gonna to switch to a different color. So when I'm doing this, I don't have to, but I'm going to wipe off the gray paint. That way it doesn't make all my other colors muddy. I have a kind of teal blue, which I know was mentioned in our story about Jackson. So I know that he liked this color. I mixed it up with mostly blue paint, but I added a little bit of green, or excuse me, a little bit of yellow to turn it tiny bit greener. And then this sounds weird, but I added a little bit of my gray paint that I mixed up earlier too, so that it's not too bright a teal. All right, here we go. You know what? I'm gonna let that drip in there. Jackson would, so why not? Okay, so if you're spinning marbles around in your paint and then on your paper, just like I am, See if you can think about what Jackson would have been doing. When he was painting, he was painting how he felt as well as what he wanted it to look like. So think about moving the marble around in the box. Like how would you move it if you were really excited? That'd probably be a lot of fast movements all over the place, really jerky, shaky movements. How would you move if you were very sad? Probably some slow, not too big a movement, pretty smallish. How would you move if you were in love? Oh, so sweet. How about if you were sad or angry or scared? Oh, if you were scared, you might shake a lot. Oh, see what that does to your painting. And take that out, plop it in my paint again because I would like a little bit more blue. Are you guys painting along with me? Feel free to add your comments in the chat since I can't see anybody. Okay, how's it looking so far? It's looking more like Jackson Pollock all the time. All right, so I have a few more colors of paint that I can use. If you guys were with us over um, the holiday break, uh, if you noticed, we were doing some goodie bag giveaways. Um, one of the things that I included in the kits was some gold metallic paint. So I have some of that left over. If you have any gold metallic paint, you can do this too. But I'm just gonna do what I did with, oh, with the <laughs> other colors and then I spilled it all over my hands. I plopped my marble in there and then I spilled it on my desk. So good thing this is a messy project, huh? Okay, blop. So um, whoop. Miss uh, Lara at the Marion Library says, if you're doing this outside, I think it would be fun to use a golf ball. Oh yeah, imagine the marks it would make with all those little dimples. I love that idea, Miss Lara. This is why I like you so much. You have good ideas. Also, you're just fun. Oh, okay, so my gold paint is mixing with some of my teal paint. And gold is basically yellow, right? And teal is sort of bluey green. So do you know what you get when you mix those together? I don't know if you can see. That's what you get when they mix together. My gold paint is much thinner too. It's watered down a little bit. So instead of my marble in the gold paint, I thought maybe I would show you a different trick you could do to make a Jackson pollock -y kind of thing. I have some yarn. I'm gonna just leave it all kind of tangled like this. Actually, I'm gonna take a little less of it, just like that. And I'm gonna drag that 
through the gold paint. I'm sticking my finger in it, don't tell. I told you this was gonna be messy. All right, so I got gold paint on my yarn. I'm just gonna let that plop right in there and then I'm gonna drag it. So if you have string anywhere, you can do that too. Works really well if you don't have any marbles around. You can also, I'm gonna switch to a different color. I have this kind of red color mixed up. You can also use a popsicle stick or anything else you have around that's kind of a stick because Jackson used sticks in our story. I'm just gonna scoop some up and splat like that. Ooh. Ooh. You have to be careful with red paint though because it looks a little bit like a crime scene if you're not careful. Oh, oh, oh. Now, you can use whatever else you have at home, like a straw to blow your paint around on your canvas, your paper. I also happened to have one of these little koosh ball rings. I don't know why, it just happened to wind up in my art supplies. So you can use that. Let's see, I'll show you what it looks like. I'm dipping it into my paint, you get that teal color. This is gonna make some, some interesting marks, I think. Let's see. Dab, dab, dab. It made some little porcupine marks on my canvas, although it's hard to see because I've got so many other splatters on here now. You can also do paintbrushes. I mean, Jackson used paintbrushes, maybe not the usual way we're used to. He would pick paint up and then fling it with his paintbrushes, but sometimes he uses brushes to drag through the paint too. But you can use whatever you have and whatever colors of paint you want until you wind up with something that reminds me a little bit of Jackson Pollock. So at the end, if you want to make it a little extra Jackson-y, put paint on your hand and put a handprint or even a bare footprint in your painting. Be sure that when you do this, that you're near the bathtub and you have somebody there to help you clean up because it's gonna get real messy real fast. I don't recommend that unless you're next to a bathtub or a sink so that you can clean up afterwards. And then just leave this in the box until all the paint is dry. Thankfully, if you're using washable paint like I am, it won't take a whole week to dry. It'll only take a few hours. But just in case, leave it in the box until it's safe. So before we leave, does anybody have any questions or anything they want to add? I miss seeing your faces, you guys. Oh, do we have someone who wants to share? Oh, hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spotlight you. You guys are muted. Okay, there we go. Hi. We have we got two two creations. Oh, they turned out amazing. Oh, I love your color palettes too. Nice purples and light blues. Yeah. Ooh, those are so great, you guys. Thank you. This was Thanks fun. Thanks for joining us. Can you guys say thank you? Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Anybody else before we say goodbye? Okay, so if anybody wants to share your creations with us afterwards, um, send us pictures on social media and we'll be able to post them so that everybody can see. All right, thank you everybody. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Their next class will be the last Wednesday in February. So I hope to see you all then. Bye.